Um, hi, I'm Helen, and I have been fostering for Hertfordshire for eight years. I'm Dave, and I've been fostering for Hertfordshire with Helen for eight years. Uh, we've had lots of different placements, so with fostering you can have short term, you can have long term, you can have respite, and, um, and also things like shared care. And it does mean that sometimes you might only have a child for a day, it might be a weekend, it might be a week. So we've had placements where some have lasted maybe two weeks, uh, one we had for a month. So when you ask me placements, I kind of think my long-term ones, um, which are the ones that have stayed with me maybe a year, two years, um, we've had six of those. So, um, but we've definitely had some others that have stayed for shorter periods of time. We are currently fostering um, two young people. Uh, one is 16 uh, and one is 18, soon to be turning 19, who is actually leaving us uh, this week. So we're currently transitioning uh, with another young person who's currently nine, who is hopefully moving in with us next week. So we've just been doing the transition period with her. So, um, But we also support um, some, a care leaver um, who has had a baby and she's been staying with us during lockdown, but we've also, uh, we have her regularly as well and offer support to her. Um, so although we might only have two placements, we do support some other young people as well and, and obviously some of our young people that have moved on who are now like 21, uh, we also have them over as well. So it's busy, isn't it? Yeah. Busy, busy household. Always busy. Um, so about nine years ago, Helen wanted to become a foster carer and she sort of tried to persuade me a bit and I wasn't sort of too sure. Um, but then she uh, sort of worked on me a little bit over time and we got start, started on the process of uh, the recruitment process to actually sort of find out more about fostering and um, went from there really and um, I love it now so and I think it's something. I've always and um, so I'm a qualified social worker uh, and I've always had um, my hand kind of in social work and in those circles I'd always kind of wanted to foster hadn't I and it was about finding the right sort of time yeah. um, and I, I started, I suppose, my profession as a, as a nurse, actually, but I was a terrible nurse uh, and kind of fell into social work. Um, and I've, I guess I had a real heart. So quite often when we're, we're working with children who are in, obviously, child protection, um, I, for me, it was always about actually you can remove them maybe from some of the trauma that they've, but actually how do we help them? And it was that real desire in me, really, to kind of continue that journey with them. Um, but it was convincing Dave, I think. <laughs> um, I think he was rightly nervous to begin with because it's a really big decision inviting someone into your home, uh, particularly um, you know, when they have had significant, some of them significant trauma. So uh, yeah, it was kind of me really, wasn't it? But yeah, like Dave said now. I think for, for, the, for the, the partner, it's like the fear of the unknown. Um, I, I don't really know. It's probably like for the kids coming to us, you know, it's, it's, they don't know what, they, what to expect. Uh, so until you've kind of done your first view, it's a little <laughs> bit like you're not really sure uh, how it's going to go. So, it's, but but once you get into it, I think you, you sort of realise that actually it's 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 not that different to rearing your own children. And and, um, and actually, we get on with it. <laughs> yeah, we really like having a busy household. So, yeah. um, and in fact, the other night we had dinner, and a, a lot of our young people were out, and it was it was just really quiet, and we didn't like it, did we? So we definitely, I think now actually, it's it's. Um, yeah, just a completely new way of life of, of just having a house full of lovely, lovely uh, young people who keep us young, I like to think. <laughs> keeping us young. Yeah. Keeping us young. I've learnt TikTok videos and all sorts, haven't I, over lockdown. Um, so yeah, they definitely keep us young. We had an initial visit where someone came out and spoke to both of us, gave us lots of information. But yeah, once we got through that bit, um, then it's uh, on to... Um, uh, the, the skills to foster course so that's um, obviously been a bit of a challenge for people to do recently because of the lockdown but they found other ways to do it online and so on so it's still going on which is good a few but sessions. you found that really useful lots of information was given it was great in that, that there was no question off the, you know like you could ask anything um, and yeah that was answered it was also great to f meet other people that were kind of in the same situation we were heavily supported, um, so we've got a son um, with autism, and that for us was a big, so he was five at the time, he's now 13, um, but 
you know, we'd only recently had, we'd had the diagnosis about a year before, so we were just starting to find out what life looked like to have also a child with additional needs. Um, and again, they were really great, weren't they? Really supportive. Um, at one point, because of his needs, we actually paused the process because we just wanted to make sure. And they, again, were really great, that was okay. And then we kind of came back to the process. Um, yeah, it's, it, you know, it's, it is intensive because they need to make sure that we're safe um, and that we're suitable to care for these, these lovely, lovely kids. But it's, uh, yeah, it is, it is intensive, but incredibly rewarding, very supportive. So I think it's about that realism and preparing you for this journey because it is a journey and you will go from maybe not much experience um, to eight years on with having lots of different placements with lots of experience. Um, so foster carers are well supported with um, uh, both their uh, supervising social worker and also there's lots of other support groups that meet outside of uh, that as well. Yep. Um, so uh, we have regular contact with our supervisor to talk, talk for issues and review how the placement's going, um, ask any questions about things that might be changing or um, you know, lots, of, lots of learning goes on. Um, and we also get encouraged to do lots of training as well, so there's uh, online training and also courses that you can go and attend in person. Yeah. Um, so uh, there's a lot of a lot of kind of stuff that you can learn as you go. Um, and we've definitely, you know, had placements that have been more difficult and challenging. Um, and I can certainly remember ringing my social worker actually uh, in tears on one occasion just because I felt I, you know, wasn't managing. And she was just amazingly supportive. Um, and we were given some respite um, and we were given lots of you know advice help support um, so I have to say all that you know it's there's lots on offer but also when if there is a difficult time there is so much help out there Ooh, where do we start so many um, the rewards are I think you get to really just really enjoy spending time with these amazing young people like it's been such an amazing journey you're journeying with them so when they first come to you you learn all about them they learn all about you um, I've learnt so we've had people with different cultures to us come and stay with us so jerk chicken was a, a new one which was very spicy wasn't it you enjoyed it I've never it. Mm -hmm. uh, so different spice levels of you know just trying different foods uh, different activities um, I think watching young people grow and certainly the young people that we've had so we, we had we've had people that have been absconders that have been in trouble with the police and actually you watch them turn their life around they don't they don't want to be that child and actually the, maybe the things that they've gone through have caused them to act that way um, but actually it's been an absolute privilege to kind of really support them to reach their full potential, to be part of that journey. Um, a bit like butterflies really, isn't it? That transformation. And, and we've, done, we've done a lot of teenagers, haven't we? Um, uh, so it's been really a blessing. So we've had maybe a 13 or 14 year old who's then left us at 19. And just watching them and preparing them for the, you know, the world. Um, they very much stay part of our family uh, and come back every Sunday, like I said earlier, with. You know, care, our care leavers often come back and um, very much part of our family. So Dave's really good with all the practical stuff. Yeah, I mean, I've, I did a bit of work with some of our uh, young people um, where one of them's moved on to um, new accommodation. Um, we helped with um, installing some wood flooring. So I actually showed her and one of the other young people that lives with us how to lay uh, wood flooring. So we kind of did that practical sort of like almost like a lesson and I just kind of showed them a bit and then let them do it themselves so and I think you um, quite enjoy passing those skills and things on don't you yeah so I did know that you get paid um, and I have to be really honest I when I started the process um, I was currently working actually as a teacher for, um, for a college local college um, uh, and I was m trying to make the decision about what I do next. I knew I wanted to foster. Um, so I did know that there was some money attached to it. I didn't know how much. So that was one of the questions that I asked early on, um, which I think is important because actually, whilst you shouldn't do it for the money, and we absolutely don't, we do still have bills that we need to pay. And for me, I see it as my job and a career. Um, 
and there's really good career opportunities. So you start as a level one carer, you move to level two, you can go to level three, which is the more specialist foster carers. Um, we also have things like uh, recruitment champions where you can get involved in recruitment of foster carers. Um, and yes, there's lots of opportunities as well. So if you are looking for kind of, it, it is a profession, I think. Um, I think we are becoming recognized a lot more. You are given those skills um, because you are a professional, you are part of a professional team around the child, um, and particularly the younger ones like the babies or the toddlers, which again, um, part of that decision-making process about where they're gonna be long-term, your input is vital. So I knew that you did get holiday pay. Um, again, I didn't know how it works. You do get holiday pay, you do get um, money towards activities. Um, when you become a foster carer, you get given a really good handbook that kind of identifies what each of the payments are to birthdays, um, which is fantastic. And I do think it's important if you're thinking about fostering um, to ask that question, if you are going to be, so for me, I was giving up the profession of a social worker um, and teacher because I want to, to do fostering and I do see it as my now new profession. Don't ever be put off um, with bringing up how much do you get paid, uh, but remembering that underneath all of it, the reason you're doing it is because you want to make a difference in a child's life. Did I do fostering? I would say 100% do it. There, it is the most rewarding, enriching, life-changing privilege to be part of these children and young people's lives. Um, yes, there's going to be challenges, but the highs of doing it completely outweigh any of the challenges. And when you do have a challenge, you are 100% supported. It is the best feeling in the world. I love it. I literally love it and um, I think it's just, it's changed our life for the better. <laughs> I love it. Um, and we have children of our se uh, ourselves, which I haven't really touched on actually, but we do have children and the difference it's also made to them. Um, our children were five and 10 when we started fostering and the absolute rewards that that has been for them, you know, they have a different understanding to the world. We are a fostering family, so although we decided to do it, we wouldn't do it with our children and they've been amazing. Now I think fostering is its own reward really. Um, the kids will benefit from your time and, and, and attention and, and you'll get something back from them. Um, you know, when the time comes for them to move on, you'll, you'll, you'll have a bond and a relationship that hopefully um, will last for a long time.